So out of all of our implements, what a piece of junk. I can honestly say that I think the sickle bar mower is one of my least favorite to hook up. It's heavy, it's just not that easy. You have all these. Where is R2 when I need him? Different attachments. Oh, let's see if I can do this. Oh. Goes there. There'll be a bar that goes in between. Actually a pin short of getting this hooked up. Wonderful. Well, of course I'll have to replace it. So on this mower, you've got your, your three point, but you also have these bars that come directly up to the back of the tractor and then you'll stretch this bar in between. That's just an extra step that I don't necessarily care for. I mean, it's nothing horrible. Adjusting that is, because it's all bent up and nasty. That's gonna be fun to get in there. It's not horrible, it's just, you know, more work than your standard implement hookup. I am gonna add back one of my stabilizer arms. I only have one that's not bent, so I'm probably just gonna put it on the side that's the easiest to, to reach initially. For the most part, this right here is going to keep it stabilized. But uh, I'm gonna throw this on anyway. That's loose, so I'm gonna put it on the other side. May actually put that on last. All right. Stick that stabilizer arm in there and we'll be good to go. But I'm gonna go ahead and raise this just to get it off the ground. This R2 unit of yours seems a bit beat up. You want a new one? Not on your life. That little droid and I have been through a lot together. Good. Okay, I should have this thing good to go. I'm gonna go with boots, no jeans. I'm going for that really nice farmer's tan where you just get that little midsection tan. You're braver than I thought. Yeah. Now I am finally heading out just before dinner to start cutting these fields and uh, see how this bad, bad boy does. Great kid, don't get cocky! So yesterday, um, I took the sickle bar mower out for the first time since we got it back from the shop. We had it in the shop for about three weeks. They basically, um, they went through, the, there's some plates right here that had gotten elongated because of uh, some loose bolts. And I, I did a video from yesterday kind of explaining you know, how the, the belt affects everything that's going on down here. I'm not gonna repeat that. If you wanna watch that, link is up there. but. The, the sickle bar mower seemed to be cutting fantastic. It was cutting very smooth. I didn't hear a whole lot. I didn't get a lot of vibration out of it. Overall, very well impressed with that, but it wasn't cutting the hay right. In fact, as I was cutting, the hay was falling forward instead of kind of falling back over the back of the sickle bar mower. Uh, when the hay falls forward like that, what happens is um, it's gonna clog up the mower and that just turns into a very frustrating situation. Frustrating. I was out here last night swearing up a storm. I was not happy at all. 
Uh, I went back and watched some videos from the last time I did this because I remember feeling frustrated having a similar issue with tall thick grass last time I used this. But I also was able to kind of work it out. And so what I was gonna do in this video is show you a little bit about the sickle bar mower and some of the adjustments that I made last time that really helped work things out. So number one, you can't have a sickle bar mower too low to the ground. Now the tractor's off, I'm gonna start it up to make sure that I get it adjusted where I want it. Um, but you don't want this to be running along the ground. If you, if you have it running along the ground, it's gonna start accumulating hay underneath it and clog it up. That was one of the issues I had yesterday. Basically, when you cut, that piece down at the far end should be shooting the hay in so you have about a six inch to a foot clearance the next time you come around that this sled here will then run in as you go through and cut. And these forks should help uh, shield the hay away from getting caught up uh, in here. What I've found is if I keep my sled perfectly in that line, uh, it won't clog up as much. The other issue that I was having yesterday was that it kept getting stuck and then breaking free. There's a, there's a little, uh, basically a, a mechanism here that if, if you hit something with it, it'll break free and swing out. Come right back with your That was very frustrating. It kept doing that to me. Part of the, the thing that I think we run into on our land is that it's a very hilly property. We have a lot of hills. We have a lot of thick grass. It's not ideal for a sickle bar mower. A drum mower would probably work better. But I do like the sickle bar mower because of its maneuverability. One of the things that I did in the past was I adjusted this bar up here further out to give this more of an upward tilt. And in doing so, what I found was that it helped lay the grass behind it and help me mow um, more effectively. So I'm going to readjust this and, and give it a slight tilt back. I'm going to check uh, my level. This should be up a little bit and this should drop down. And then this uh, tension arm here should help um, adjust how far down that piece lies depending on uh, when this is touching the ground. So when, when this is touching the ground, that piece should be all the way down. So I wanna make sure that all of that is uh, touching correctly. I want to make sure that I have this upper arm adjusted outward a little more to just uh, give the, the mower a slight tilt back to help me on the hills. And then I'm going to give it another run today and see what, see how it works. No matter what, I have to get this, this, this field cut down today. Yesterday I was also having some tractor issues. Those I've known about. I've been working on them. I don't have time to fix everything and get this mowed. So there are some things I just have to work around. If I can get this mowing the way I want it to, then the, the tractor, I don't mind waiting on. And so I have this adjusted so that this is slightly off the ground. That is touching down there. Now, it's leaning forward quite a bit. I want it to lean back just a little bit. This bar here appears to be kind of stuck. It's not wanting to uh, budge at all. Even if I set this down and take the tension off of it, I don't think I'm gonna get much luck with it. I'm gonna try. It's just a very, it's very uh, stuck. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get a different bar for up here, one that I can adjust out a little further because I think that this right here is part of my problem.
Unfortunately, I think that's as far out as I can adjust this bar, but I, I still feel like it needs to go up a little higher, but that's a lot further than the bar I was running yesterday. So basically in adjusting that top bar out, I angled these up slightly from where they were. Um, I would still prefer it to be a little more than what I have going right now, but I don't have, you gotta watch out for this stuff too. This, when, it, when hay gets caught up in here, I have actually caught the hay on fire because this is just spinning around. So I like to stop every now and then and make sure that all of this is cleared out. That could be bad news bears. I think I'm gonna want a little more angle than what I currently have, but there's a chance that this will work just fine. And again, by angling it up, I'm gonna, it's gonna help me with the, the unevenness and hilliness of our ground. And, um, you know, as the hay comes in, I'm hoping that it'll start to fall back. Hopefully I'll notice a difference uh, just with doing what I did. If not, I, I put some liquid plumber on my other top piece here. And as soon as I get that one um, freed up, I'll probably switch them out just because I don't like having these fully extended like that one is. It's just not quite big enough for the task I'm asking it to do. Um, but I think that this might be enough to get me started while I wait on that top one to, to unfreeze. Okay, so I had a couple good passes. Um, and what I figured out was that uh, my, my hydraulics, they're not keeping, um, the hydraulic controls aren't keeping this exactly where I want it to be. I believe, sir, it says that the power coupling on the negative axis has been polarized. I'm afraid we'll have to replace it. I mean, I think it's okay, but this hydraulic control, I've never really had very good control with my hydraulic on this tractor, and I don't know why. That's something I'm, I'm going to look into. But what I figured out is if I keep my hand on the lever and I just play with it a little bit, um, I could keep it about where I want it to as I mow. And then it seems to be doing fine while I do that. Problem I'm having now is that the tractor doesn't want to stay running. And it started doing this to me last year. I do have a carburetor rebuild kit. It tends to do it when it gets real hot. And you know, it's about hundred degrees out here today. But I know that if I give it a rest, let it cool down for a little bit, try it again, I'll be able to make some progress. And now that I've figured out what's going on with my sickle bar mower, what I might do is just take a hydration break and then come back out. And I'm thinking that it shouldn't be a problem for me to get this field cut down today. It's just a matter of trying to get the work done with what we have working in, 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 ha in, it, in its current operating condition. So I, I started out going long ways down the field yesterday um, you can kind of see down there where I've cut the hay down and that worked. I got a couple passes before I started having trouble and obviously I came back up. Today I've been cutting down through the center of the field, um, which I've had a little bit better luck with and I'll probably keep going back and forth until this main section up here is done and then I'll go back down and work on that lower section. I did manage to break my guide off. I'm, I'm still not sure how I did that. Uh, it must have been weak already. And then uh, as I tried to back up to unjam it, it broke off, but that's the guide that keeps the hay uh, moving in the right direction. It's still doing a pretty decent job without it, um, but I'll probably just order a new plate offline and put it on there or uh, take this one off and get it welded back on so it doesn't come off again. At this point, I've hayed and mowed most of the field. Uh, there is still a section to my left I want to get, and I'd love to get a little more to my right, but the tractor's acting up. I'm going to let it sit overnight, and maybe if I can get it running right before 
uh, I start tethering in the morning, I'll go ahead and cut down a couple more sections and then start hitting everything with the hay tether. But this has been a royal chore, so it's really gonna depend on how ambitious I feel tomorrow. If it's running, I might go ahead and just give some areas a few whacks. Um, and if the tractor dies, then I'll let it die because I don't need to tether until the end of the day tomorrow, but uh, it doesn't need to be tossed. There's a lot of patches because of the sickle bar mower not hitting right. It should be, the, the, the sickle bar mower should be sitting 16 inches above the ground on the back side of the tractor, perfectly level, and then you make your adjustments from there. My hydraulics on my tractor are such a mess that I'm having to pretty much come up with my own solution to get it to cut right. But uh, I've been able to get this far, which is probably a good five or six acres. And then um, if I can finish cutting out what I want to of this, I'll go ahead and finish the haying process. And then I'll probably split our backfield uh, which is about 15 acres in half and do half one, you know, half one week, half the other week. The, the, the other half has gotten so weedy, I'm not sure that I'm gonna hay it. I might just brush hog it, but nothing ever goes smoothly your first couple times. Tractor needs a lot of work. I'm slowly getting different repairs that I wanna do to it done. It just feels like it's a never ending battle. Yeah. It's been a long day.